What's up, chums? Sharky here, and welcome back to the Shark Bites podcast. I'm by myself today, and I'm going to be talking about Down Home Fur Con, or DHFC, this past weekend, from May 1st to May 3rd. So, as some of you guys know, uh, the weekend before that, I had gone to baby fur con which was april 25th and that was my first virtual con so i don't really have much else to compare virtual cons to other than baby fur con so i might be referencing that quite a bit in this video i decided to make this video a podcast instead of a fursuit video because it's kind of long before i get into it i also wanted to say that i did not attend every single panel I tried to go to most of it. I definitely made it a priority to go to the main events. So I'll start off, as always, with the things that I liked about this con. I was very surprised how well it simulated an in-person furry convention. I've talked about this before. That can be very difficult to pull off when you're in a virtual environment. There were a lot of events and a lot of panels that made me feel like I was at an in-person convention. And I want to give a big thank you to all the staff of Down Home FurCon for being able to achieve that, even though they probably had no idea <laughs> what they were doing sometimes. You guys did a great job just, like, making everybody feel welcome. Everybody was super friendly. And it just, it felt like a real con. And it was really nice to experience that. What I mean by that is, I think some of the things that made it feel like a real con is you guys had a dance competition even though like part of it like all the videos were pre-recorded it felt like a dance comp um with the judges and everything so they had a dance comp they had a rave like late night raves and djs come in which is something that i'm a huge fan of at in-person cons they also did a bunch of giveaways at the closing ceremonies and i won a keychain from dead bomb art but I think the regular announcements were actually one of my favorite parts because we would like talk about the day before. I don't know. It was just very like homey and very just like like you're talking with your friends. Another thing that they did later on was a fursuit meet and greet, which I was not expecting. They wanted to do like a fursuit parade, but it's kind of hard to organize that for a virtual con. So they ended up making a discord where we could dress in fursuit and like enable video and video chat with people like a meet and greet sort of panel thing. And I loved that. I hope that they do more of that. Um, if they're able to organize some kind of fursuit parade whether it's pre-recorded or whatever, similar to the dance competition. I would love to see more of that next year or at any other virtual cons that I attend. When I had first heard about this con, I had heard that it was going to be on Picardo, which is an art streaming site, and I was not happy about that. I've heard a lot of bad things about Picardo. They seem to have a lot of streaming issues, and Baby Fur Con was on Zoom, so I was concerned, like, how that was going to work, if it would feel personal in the way that Zoom does, where it's like, you know, you have video, you have audio chat um, with people. What ended up happening was they started out using Picardo and Twitch, and then I think by the second day or the end of the first day, they completely switched over to Twitch because it just, we broke Picardo. <laughs> it would not work anymore. Um, it was super laggy. Audio was cutting out. Just not good. So they ended up streaming on Twitch, which I think was an excellent idea. Another nice thing about Twitch is that it posts your stream video to the channel on Twitch so that you can watch it later if you missed something. If you guys watched my Baby Fur Con review, um, I had mentioned that that was something about BFC that I didn't like, was that we couldn't record it or it wasn't being recorded. 
and we couldn't go back and watch what we missed. But with this, um, they've even offered to like upload it to YouTube, which I'm really hoping that they follow through on. I know there's going to be like some editing and stuff involved, but um, it's on Twitch now. So like all the panels that I didn't get to see, I can go back and watch it. And I really like that. Another cool thing about this con is there were a ton of featured artists and a dealer's den. A ton of very talented artists. I always get excited when I see a dealer's den. <laughs> like, even at an in-person con, like, that's one of the first places I head towards is, you know, where's where's the art stuff? Where's the artist alley? Where's the dealer's den? Like, I want to buy stuff. And they had that operational, like, throughout the entire con, like a real in-person convention where you could just stop in whenever you wanted to and buy some furry merch. And that was really, really nice. So the next like that I had about this convention was the use of Discord. I haven't had a whole lot of experience with Discord, but I know, like, what it is and, like, its basic functions. They started a Discord chat in addition to the Twitch chat, which made it easier to contact the staff and get to know people attending the con. Because I noticed that the Twitch chat, as you can well imagine, got overloaded at times. Like, the chat would just be flooded and things would get overlooked, but it was really nice that they had a Discord chat in in case that happened to contact staff directly or just get to know people. That, I think, made up for the fact that there was no, like, video chat, which I'll talk about that in a second, but it made it feel more personal. Once again, I want to thank the staff for the daily stream improvements. The first day, they had a lot of issues um, with Picardo and then switching to Twitch and then like things were delayed and I'll get more into that in a second. But um, they did listen to what people were saying, which is always important. They did listen to us and they made changes on a daily basis throughout the entire con. So thank you for doing that. This con was spread out between May 1st and May 3rd. So it was a three-day convention, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Usually furry conventions take place during a weekend. I feel like people were able to access it easily, like when they got off work or like the hours that it was set for. I think worked for a lot of people having it on a weekend. Another advantage to having it spread out multiple days, and I talked about this in my Baby FurCon review, there were no overlapping panels. Typically, when you have an in-person convention, you're always going to have overlapping panels because they usually have a lot of panels for something like that. It's a lot bigger. But for this, since it was like spread out across three days, they had no overlapping panels, which I really enjoyed because then I could adjust my schedule accordingly. Didn't have to miss anything. But even if I did, like I said before, the Twitch stream playback, I could go watch that. Every panel and every stream got about an hour to an hour and a half. And that was nice that there were no overlapping things, um, which was one of my my gripes about the baby fur con panels is a lot of them were in the same time slot. I don't really have a lot of gripes about this con, but there were a few things that I would like to point out that aren't really a huge deal, but I want to point them out. And I'm speaking from my personal opinion, so if, if you don't agree with me, that's totally fine. Um, these were just some of my personal opinions about the convention. I felt like there were too many art streams. When you look at all three days of the schedule back to back, there are a lot of digital art streams on the schedule. And I totally get it. Like this con was put together by a bunch of artists and they want to show their work, which is totally acceptable. You know, you deserve it. And they wanted to showcase their work for people to see at the convention. I just felt like there were way too many digital art streams when they maybe could have added 
more variety to their schedule just to break up the back-to-back digital art streams. I mean, this was the first year that they did this. You know, that could totally change. Like, maybe they didn't have enough time to take applications for panels. I don't know. They did occasionally have some game times or, like, game streams. Um, I think they did Jackbox. I did not attend that one. I did stop into an Agario stream. Honestly, I found it really boring. And this is just my personal opinion, but there were a few panels that I found really boring. Like the Agario stream. Or they were just uninteresting to me. There was a panel, I think, that was like a a sewing one and... I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad or anything. I mean, this is the first time they've ever done this. And I know that some people are a little camera shy and stuff. But basically, like, the artist didn't really answer a whole lot of questions that people had during the stream. And they were very quiet. They didn't say a whole lot. And they did have music, which was nice. But maybe, like, some of the people that are more camera shy, I would encourage you to be a little more, like, outgoing. Like, just make up a joke or just say something. Just talk with people. Look at the chat. And I know they can't always do that because they're, like, they're, like, making something during the stream. My next issue was actually resolved later on. Um, the first day, the microphones were extremely low volume. And I had to turn, like, my laptop or my phone, like, all the way up to hear what they were saying. The microphone volumes were just way too low. Don't be afraid to, like, crank it up because people can always turn it down, but you can't always turn it up if it's being recorded at a low volume. Um, But that's just a little technical thing, but it seemed to be resolved. Like, people said, like, you know, we can't hear you, so, like, they turned it up later. The chat, as I mentioned before, the chat was kind of overcrowded on Twitch, which I'm glad that they used Discord simultaneously. That seemed to help with the chat traffic a little bit. There were definitely times where it felt like it was getting spammy a bit but I think like you know next year like as they separate people out into chat rooms during the convention that definitely helps with uh chat flooding as I mentioned before the lack of face cams and like interacting through video except for the fursuit meet and greet it kind of bugs me like I wish that they would have opened that up for some of the other Discord chats other than just the fursuit meet and greet. And as they like hire more moderators, they might allow that a little more. Makes it feel more like you're hanging out with people. So overall, similar to some of the things that I said for Baby Furcon, need more variety on panels and maybe interaction with people other than just text chat if that's possible whether that be like opening up more video chat capabilities on discord whatever some panels were just boring because like the artists weren't really saying anything or or it just wasn't my thing like the agario game I'd like to point out that this con did fantastic for being the first time it's ever been ran. I believe they had 1,880 attendees, I think, which is great, like, (laughs) and almost unheard of. I think that speaks volumes to, like, how bored we are indoors (laughs) because of quarantine, like, not being able to go anywhere these virtual cons have definitely been a huge help with like giving us stuff to do so i really appreciate it i plan to go to more virtual cons in the future and as i pointed out with baby fur con it's so good to go to these because it's not costly for people to attend gives people the opportunity to go to a furry convention if they can't afford going to an in-person one whether it be Travel, location, hotel cost, admission cost, all of that stuff. Like, or they don't have a ride or gas or whatever. It removes all of that stress from going to a convention. Um, And it just makes it available to anyone who has a computer and has internet, given that it works. (laughs) Sometimes um, things crash and 
internet is not always reliable. I don't have a lot of nitpicks about this convention. I would love to attend this in Texas um, if they do end up making this an in-person convention, like a full-fledged convention, as a Texan myself. Um, <laughs> I would love that. I'd also, I'd really like to help out with this convention. I'm really hoping that I'll be able to apply when they open up staff applications because I would love to get involved with the organization of this con, be it in person or another virtual one. I'd love to help out. It was a lot of fun. I'd love to get to know the staff some more and be a part of this. Being in Texas and being a part of my local furry group, I'm always looking for opportunities to get more involved with the furry community here because I know it's it exists and I know that they're trying to, you know, organize things, more conventions, things like that. And I just, I, I'm so excited for it. Like, I, I want to be a part of that and be a part of the community. Like I said, big thank you to all the staff that put this together. Thanks to all the artists. You're amazing. And I'd love to see this be a full-fledged convention, and I hope maybe someday I can help out with that. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.